Hello and welcome. Come on in this morning to our live stream, day 12 of the Femathon. Yes, come on in and let me know that you are there as we dive on in together. I am always drinking tea here from the Queen Tea, uh, Queen tea Mug, the Queen Bee Mug. <laughs> Um, so grab yourself some tea while we wait just a minute for our sisters to arrive. Let me know you're there. As you're jumping on, announce yourself. Let me know you're there. Say hi. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe over here and make sure you click on that little bell because it will send you all of the notifications when I put new videos up here. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the key missing ingredient that I discovered on my pathway of emerging into the true feminine. Liv, hello Liv, welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Grab yourself some tea and we will get started in just a minute or so as we are waiting just for a few women to catch up with us. And you've got me in a different um, location in my house today because I just finished a um, delivering a program and it's really sunny today. As you can see, we're just flared with sun all over the place, which is so lovely. We have this very intense sun coming at us here. Um, it's probably affecting our video quality, but so be it. Being sunny is not a bad thing. <laughs> we like that piece. We like the being sunny. It's a good thing. All right, lovies, I'm going to jump on in. I'm going to dive in today. All right. So a uh, huge big welcome to you. It's day 12 of the Femathon. Day 12, my goodness. <laughs> now, if you're new here, if you've just actually just jumped into uh, this group, uh, we are inside of a 15-day Femathon in which I'm actually conducting live streams, sharing with you videos, and at the culmination of which I will be conducting a day of master classes. Um, and that is happening next Monday. Now I've put the link here. I'm going to put it in here again. I'd love you to sign up and enroll ASAP for the master class for the reason that. Um, as soon as you sign up, I'm going to send you a welcome, of course, and I'm going to send you some other videos about feminine power and energy, some really short little ones that are going to help you to understand, you know, maybe some of the things that have been happening for you. I'm here ultimately to educate you and to elevate you toward your true feminine power. Um, okay, so we've basically been asking the question, uh, how the heck do we get here as women and what do we need to do to fully embrace our feminine power now the masterclass next monday you're going to have three different times during the day in which to attend the masterclass i encourage you to enroll now if you haven't already if you have enrolled you can share with some of the women um, how you're experiencing the videos that i'm sending you i'd love some feedback on that from you and um it's a great way for you to dive in a bit deeper. I give you little sort of 10, 15, 20 minute times here over the uh, over the Femathon in my live streams, but you're going to have a whole 90 minutes with me during the masterclass. Okay. Now today I'm really excited because I'm going to be discussing what I call the key missing ingredient that I discovered when I was on my own pathway of learning about true feminine power. So let's just back, um, <clears throat> backpedal, rewind, whatever we call that, just a little bit. Um, if you look at me back, you know, young girl and then evolving into my corporate self, because of my upbringing and having no role models and no mentorship around myself or my feminine power, I took all of the clues from the world around me about how to be, how to act, think, communicate, engage in business, um, and even perceive success and let alone perceive my own sense of power from these cues from the world around me. In the absence of any other mentorship, any other frame, any other concept, that's all I knew. That's all I knew how to be. 
Now, because, you know, I don't I think you probably know this, my father died very young, and I also had a mother who was pretty absent. So from, you know, very early, like literally pre-teenage, I was basically becoming very independent and very tough, independently tough. And um, it was, this was building all sorts of fortresses inside me um, against the world, but it was in order to survive. It was in order to not to survive, but I thought I was doing that to be capable, successful, um, achieve goals, and I thought that it was heading me towards thriving. But I'm not going to go deeply into my story, but you know that by the time I hit my 40s, in fact, late 30s, I was starting to burn out. I was totally burning out, and I did burn out in my early 40s. Now, if you have a look at the arc of my story, it was very Candace against the world. It was very alone. It was very independent. It was very much me creating successes and achieving things as a lone wolf on my own. And it wasn't that um, I was conscious of that. It's all I knew. It's all I knew. And I watched a lot of people around you, around you, around me, doing the same thing. You know, even as a little children, as little children, we're taught things like you achieve something as a little child and they're saying, look, she did that all on her own. And so I went, oh, oh, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to do things all on my own, to achieve all on my own. And guess what this set me up for? This set me up for being all on my own. <laughs> it really did set me up to both feeling very alone on the inside and effectively ending up alone. You know, relationships that didn't work, feeling alone inside of a relationship, even if I was in one. Um, this is not what I wanted. You know, my soul, myself, really had a sense of unity with people somewhere, but I, I just, I had literally had no idea about what that would feel like. Um, I was taught to be in um, co uh, competition with people and eventually that ends up as conflict with people as opposed to, like I literally didn't have a concept of collaboration or teamwork. So I came from a pretty far end of that man mode spectrum, right, where it was Candace against the world, I'm taking on the world, I'm going to achieve and I'm damn well going to gonna thrive and survive here. But can you see there was always this energy of fight, separation, aloneness in that belief system. So back to my key discovery, the key ingredient that took me, it's probably the last thing that I got, you know, in all my training and learning and application of feminine power and energy in what I teach you now, the piece around community and sisterhood was the last piece that I discovered and that it unlocked so much for me. So... This key ingredient is just that, sisterhood, <laughs> sisterhood. Now, I know for many of you, you might perceive the world through some of the lenses that I shared with you about me. And because I speak to so many women in so many cultures, in so many different situations, socioeconomic, different religious um, and ethnic backgrounds, so many women don't trust other women. <laughs> It really breaks my heart now when I hear that because I know how different it can be. And when I talk about sisterhood, I'm basically talking about what sisterhood can provide you. And when I talk about sisterhood, I'm talking about empowered and empowering sisterhood. Now, what you may have considered um, friendships or sisterhood in the past may very well have really been coming from the false feminine and anything in the false feminine or false masculine dynamics is a world of fight antagonism and conflict <laughs> so just to be clear here when I'm speaking about sisterhood I'm talking about an elevated sisterhood in which uh, we are constantly seeing each other in each other our queen in which we're constantly encouraging each other toward our true feminine and even when we fall that there's no judgment it's not derogatory uh, that the, the women who are standing up are there to pull you up, to encourage you up into yourself. 
there's this concept out there of <clears throat> when you put crabs, as in crabs, ocean crabs, into a bucket together and one little crab tries to crawl out of the bucket, the other crabs just grab onto the crab and pull them back in. Now, in my sisterhood, the Powerfully Feminine Sisterhood, there's zero tolerance for crabs in a bucket. <laughs> this is a world in which there are no crabs in a bucket. This is a world in which sisterhood does a few things for you. It provides support. It provides reflection, honest reflection, on where you're at and what you need. <clears throat> It provides a sense of uplifting or pulling you up into and toward your inner authentic self. It provides reality checks. In the Powerfully Feminine Sisterhood, as the women that know, if you're here, you can share this with them. I'm pretty direct and I will tell you if you're asking the wrong question or if you're deviating from the practice or if you've collapsed in a way that is totally compassionate and you know that I'm holding you in the background, right? <laughs> now, it's a waste of time me flossing around the edges or fluffing around or saying, mm -mm, I'm pretty direct, okay? And that is true love from me. That is me being loving and supportive. Sisterhood also provides acceptance. Acceptance of where you've come from, what you've had to deal with, where you're at, in order that you can move toward where you're going. We have this concept in transformation work, which is you cannot transform what you don't see. So we have to accept what we've come to. We have to accept our part in it too, okay? Because we've got to get out of the realm of the victim eventually in order to stand up and be victorious in the queen. But we need to accept and understand first. <clears throat> And of course, sisterhood can also provide these beautiful concepts of collaboration and community. Now, as the Powerfully Feminine Sisterhood grows, women are starting to create collaborations with each other. They may be business collaborations. They may just be lifelong friendships. But we are stronger together. And I can tell you that that concept I didn't even know existed beforehand. We're stronger when we're together. And that means all of us, even when some are collapsing, even when some are not there yet, we hold unity, we support each other, we stand up together. We are stronger as a sisterhood. And needless to say, when we're in sisterhood, we have a shared interest. So in the Powerfully Feminine Sisterhood, which is the support community for the Powerfully Feminine Intensive, We have a shared interest, which is we see in each other, we see in ourselves, and we desire to be feminine and strong and experience our sense of inner power and our feminine essence and energy together. That's what the container of the Fowley Feminine Intensive is about. And needless to say, the overarching thing behind all of that, in my sisterhood at least, is that of love of divine love. You enter the Powerfully Feminine Sisterhood when you enroll in the Powerfully Feminine Intensive Program and you know that you are going to be loved, that you are not going to be judged, that whatever you have come from that has brought you to this moment in which you are ready to make a decision to be in sisterhood, that you will be accepted. Whether you are a different religion, you come from a different culture, you have a different skin color than me or anybody else inside there, you are going to be 100% accepted as a woman. It's a woman-only community by design, of course, because we want to have a safe container in which we get to explore our own feminine power. All right, lovelies, let me check in with you who is here. Sarah, hello again. Talisha, hello beauties. Do you have any questions, ahas, acknowledgements at this point? Yes, I know I'm very golden and sunny today. It's, it's, it's uh, fall here and <laughs> as it happens, the, the sun goes at an angle and it's pouring in the window today, which I think is quite lovely. 
It's really quite lovely. And I'm going to take a sip of my tea. Now for any of you, if you'd like to share, share in the comments, if you relate to the concept of empowered sisterhood, or if you haven't experienced that yet in your life, and if it is something that interests you, what is it about this concept of sisterhood that you would most love to experience for yourself? So you can share in the comments below any of that. You know, as we're finishing up here today, or as we're you know, concluding our conversation here today, there's this interesting concept right around what does feminine leadership look like? And we've often perceived leadership through the masculine lens. That there's sort of one leader and then everybody else is a follower. I'd love to reframe that for us here right now. That in the light of the fact that the feminine has everything to do with community, collaboration, care, support within a community environment, that leadership starts to become something that becomes more disseminated amongst the women who themselves stand up in their own queen. So what I mean by that is, um, you may have found me, for example, through YouTube and um, or the Smart Savvy Feminine group on Facebook, and you might perceive me as a leader or something like that. Now, I'm not going to shirk that responsibility, I'm not trying to do that, but it is my observation that when the women who have, have changed, who have transformed and evolved through the Powerfully Feminine Intensive Training, they literally start to shine and they just stand up in their own leadership within the sisterhood. And this is so beautiful because it means that we have other people to turn to, that it doesn't all become about one person, which is hard. It's a very big responsibility for one person to be the leader of a movement. Um, and I'm seeing these women pop up, like I see them pop and they pop and they, they become a real leader in a certain aspect of their own feminine power. I have a woman, and I think she's here today, Sarah Hale. She's been working with me for a while. I hope you don't mind me naming you, honey. Um, but she is totally leading and shining in becoming a powerfully feminine woman inside the corporate world. That seems like a concept that's batshit crazy, right? That you could actually really be empowered and lead from being in your feminine in the corporate world. Because I know that's the very place in which I was taught to be masculine. And I know for you, Sarah, it was for you. And yet she's totally shining. Things that she used to see as antagonistic and fights and, and wars going on between her and the, her team and men, it is literally turned around. These people are supporting her, totally respect her and revere her, put her up for for promotions and say this is the one you need to talk to she suddenly has this whole support system of these beautiful true masculine men around her in the corporate environment helping her to be herself i have other women who are mothers who i know this sounds weird because we think of motherhood as something you know essentially feminine but we have these mothers who were doing their mothering from their masculine starting to go no I want to mother from the feminine. I want to show my daughters how they can be empowered, be feminine, have, shine their feminine essence, because I don't want them to have to go the path that I went down. All right, my loves. <laughs> You're getting named a lot today, Sarah. <laughs> Sophie Louise, I feel like sometimes the feminist disc, uh, I don't sure discourses doesn't think being feminine is a choice women actually want to make. Yeah, I'm sometimes nervous about bringing it up with my friends, but this framework has really helped me. I hope to gather my girlfriends, which also like to be consciously feminine. Absolutely. <laughs> Sarah, all good. Yes. Well, you see, my dear, when you stand up as a leader, you are going to get named and you're going to get seen. And that's part of the thing, right? As women, we hide and we don't want to be seen and we don't want to come out of hiding because you are going to start to be seen and recognized for who you are. 
that is one of the greatest things that I encourage in sisterhood is for women to come out of hiding, right? We don't realize we're hiding because we feel afraid. We feel like we're going to get bashed down again anyway, so we may as well just stay down there, that we're going to be judged, by the way, by other women, as Sophie is rightly uh, sharing there. That women are sometimes the worst people to keep us encouraged toward man mode. When you actually stand up in actually what is feminine, a lot of women don't like that and they don't know why they don't. So we have to be compassionate toward them, right? There's lots of reasons why we hide our true feminine nature. And if you were trying to do that on your own, it would be hard. It would be very, very difficult to try to stand up on your own. Another reason for sisterhood, because then you get to come back and feel the support and know that this is right. This is simply you standing up in your own authentic feminine self. You have a right to do this. And we, as a sisterhood, are there to support you in that. So what I would love you to do is to share below what has been your perception of sisterhood in the past and what questions do you have about sisterhood moving forward? All right, lovelies. So just a reminder as we're finishing up here today, a reminder to make sure that you enroll for the masterclass next Monday. There are three time slots that you can enroll in it. And I want you to do it today because there's a bunch of videos that you can catch up on that I will send you that will help you to understand where you're at, get you juiced up and ready for the masterclass itself so that you can understand more about where you've come from and where you need to get to. All right, sending much, much love from my heart to yours and I will see you back here very, very soon. Much love and bye-bye for now.